Hello, this is Pastor Jay with 431 Global Ministries with today's devotional prayer. Today's devotional prayer is taken from the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles was written by the Bible writer Ezra, and he wrote this somewhere around 450 B.C. And of course, uh, uh, when you look at what Chronicles is, is exactly what it says it is. It's a chronicle. Uh, it's basically a continuation of the Davidic covenant. After David, of course, Solomon became king, and it showed all of the grandeur of Solomon and all the the things that Solomon did, and you know all the things that led up to uh, to Solomon's reign and through his reign. And then, of course, as you study the book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles, you you find out that many of the characters of the kings that uh, uh, preceded Solomon are listed. Uh, their characters, whether they were faithful to God or whether they were not. Uh, when you look at the background of Chronicles, uh, you see that uh, after the, the death of Solomon, uh, the kingdom of Israel was divided into ten tribe and a two tribe to the south. Uh, the ten tribe kingdom of the north, uh, they went into idol worship. They were led by Jeroboam. And then the two tribe kingdom of the south, of course, was uh, ruled by Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And we see some of the accounts of this and, and all the things that happened during this time period. And then finally, the writer culminates uh, in, the, in what happened with Jerusalem and the destruction of Jerusalem and how that, uh, that great city uh, would be held captive by Babylon for 70 years. But there was a light of hope found in the book of Second Chronicles, uh, there was mentioned that uh, at the end of a, the period of time, Cyrus would allow these, these uh, individuals to go back to their homeland. So Chronicles uh, really takes a, a, a lot of the story of, of, of uh, Israel's history and when they divided and, and how it all happened uh, after the death of King Solomon. Tonight's scripture is a very encouraging passage of scripture. And in light of what we, the world, are experiencing right now with the coronavirus, uh, as well as even here in America, uh, this is a very appropriate scripture. And I pray that this uh, will certainly be a benefit to you. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're going to read verses 15 through 17. It says, and he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come by the ascent of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. And you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Note our prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we have here your gracious answer to Jehoshaphat's prayer. And it was a speedy answer. While he was yet speaking, you heard before the congregation was dismissed, they had assurance given them that they would be victorious. For it is never in vain to seek you. The spirit of prophecy came upon a Levite that was present, not in any place of imminency, but in the midst of the congregation. The spirit like the wind blows where he uh, blows on whom he lists. Whether he was a prophet before this or not is uncertain. Most probably he was, which would make him the more regarded. There needed no sign. The thing itself was to be performed the, the very next day, and that would be confirmation enough to his prophecy. He encouraged them to trust in you, through the danger was very threatening. He said, be not afraid. 
They had admitted fear enough to have brought them to you. Yes, the battle was not theirs. They could not do it in their own strength, not of their own cause. The battle was yours, and you do and will as you desire. But even though this battle was yours, they still needed to engage. Through that prophetic word, you gave them intelligence of the motions of their enemy and ordered them to march towards them with particular directions where they would find them. It is fit that he who commands the deliverance should command those for whom the deliverance is to be brought and give the necessary orders both for time and peace. He assured them that they should be not the glorious instruments, but the joyful spectators of the total defeat of the enemy. As Moses said to Israel at the Red Sea, God is with you who is able to do his work himself and will do it. If the battle be his, the victory shall be his too. Father, we are at war now. We have a spiritual battle that we are fighting and our enemy is using physical things against your people. There is an evilness that is prevalent and it is that evilness that is being used to bring pestilence, uneasiness, and fear among masses of people. Not just here in the land of the free, but around the world as a demonic antichrist spirit is trying to take over all and take our freedom in spreading the gospel message. Father, we rebuke and totally reject any system that wants total control over our choices and takes away our individuality. Yes, we submit to Christ. We will do things His way as His way brings true liberty. Today, as we stand in the face of these vicious attacks, as Christian soldiers, we stand against these spiritual and physical enemies and we know that you will tread them under your feet. You will be more than a conqueror. Father, help us to be as Jehoshaphat and his people. For he received these assurances with faith, reverence, and thankfulness. Father, today we bow our heads. We fall before you. We worship you. And with lifted voices, we praise you. It takes an act of faith to give thanks for a promise, though it be not yet performed. Father, we do not know if we are approaching your end or not. If it is not your end, we thank you for giving us victory over these enemies. They will not take our peace. They will not take our joy. And they will not take our faith. But even if it is your end, we know that you still have the victory and you will be glorified while you put your enemies under your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, we must declare victory. Yes, there are forces out there that are trying to take freedom, that are trying to take individuality, that are trying to take everything that is of Christ away. They want to have control over the commerce, the markets. They want to have control over the, the religions and the faith. They want to have control over it all. And rightfully so, because the devil is the ruler of the world, and we are currently in his world, the devil is not happy that we are spreading the gospel around the world. And the gospel message is still being preached even in countries where the work has been under ban. I think of China and the great multitude of believers over the last 60, 70, 80 years that have come to Christ despite the fact that they've had to do it in secret. The power of God is here. God is calling men and women to faith. The gospel will continue to be preached until the Lord says it is finished. And we will continue to grow in numbers as great army of Christian soldiers. But we cannot allow 
all of the tools of the enemy and all of the things that the enemy is now using, including this pestilence, to paralyze us into a fear that we need to give up. We will not give up. Our God is faithful. Our God is a conqueror, and we will have the victory in Jesus Christ. It's my prayer that whoever reaches these words will be encouraged by this. If you're experiencing something very terrible right now, if you're going through the symptoms of this virus or you're sick and your faith feels weak, call on the Lord. It was while Jehoshaphat was praying that that prophet came forward and spoke those encouraging words. Have no fear. Stand still and see the salvation of our Lord. That's my prayer for each and every one of you. May God bless you. I pray you have a good night.